Before we get into it, please check out all of our social media. You will find all of the details in the link below. And don't forget to subscribe to BDC TV. We don't want you missing any of the amazing content that we have coming your way. Speaking of amazing content, look at this. Darby Todd, how you doing, I'm mate? Good, how are you? I Can't am see you very again. well. It's good to see you again. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for having us here oh, at Manchester welcome. Academy yeah. with, uh, with Devin Townsend. This Indeed. is a monster drum kit. Yeah, this is a... Uh, this is amazing. Like uh, I, th I saw everyone when they walked in the room and they kind of look at it and just go, like, even though it's just a drum kit, it looks awesome. It's, it's not just a drum kit, <laughs> well, is it? No, it's not. It's, uh, it makes me happy every day I see it. Oh, now, th there's an interesting story about this because I know that you have uh, your first kit you got was Raven Glass. That's correct. That was going to be the kit that was on this tour yeah. until... Yeah, so originally I was going to get the Raven Glass kit, I was going to get the orange kit, and this was going to be my studio kit. And um, I, I sent Devon a picture of uh, the drum kit, like in the process of being made, you know, just in a pile, you know, there's no hardware on mm. it or anything. And he was just like, man, that looks awesome. We should use that kit. I'm going to make the entire aesthetic for the tour orange, uh, which if you look back there on the uh, backdrop, if you can see that. So that's all stemmed from this? That's all stemmed from the color of this drum kit. Wow, cool including some people's clothing attire as well. So um, so we were like, yeah, that's all cool, but we wanted to use like a big double bass drum mm. kit for this tour. And um, when I ordered the kit, I'd only ordered one bass drum. So uh, I was chatting with Dev and we're like, well, maybe we'll do like a jelly bean kit, kind of go half raven glass, half orange. And uh, Keith phoned me and he's like, oh, your drums are nearly ready. Um, by the way, I made you a second bass drum. So uh, yeah, he surprised me. And now we've got an orange dr all orange drum kit. But do you know, I mean, I love the Raven Glass, as yep. you know. Oh, I love it. This, it's amazing. This is a real statement. Now, this yeah. is, this is a one-off. This is your. Yep. I, I don't know. Does it have a name, the colour? Um, we were joking. We were going to call it something like um, the Green Monster. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally get but, that. But that never really happened. So no, uh, I think just orange. It's it's certainly orange. <laughs> yeah. But doesn't it look incredible? Yeah. It really does. I mean, it just jumps out at you, and it sounds. We've just. Yeah, just you, you just the got to witness check. the sound check. And it is absolutely beautiful. So tell us, just let's, let's go through the sizes, what we've okay. got first of all. Obviously, the, the, it's the Legend series. Yep. Um, yeah, it's all Legend. Um, so yep. it's all 100% birch. Uh, yep. And I mean, everything on it, aside from the color, is completely stock. Mm -hmm. You know, it's what anyone else would buy from BDC. Sure. This is it. Um, so should we start with the kit drums? Yeah, yeah. So just normal 22 by 16. Um, I've got two of them. And uh, if I'm honest, I'm using a double pedal. It's no secret. You're not. You're not secretive about it, are you? No, it's, of course it's, not. It's, it um, serves a purpose. So we would have used two two bass drums, but the problem was that we were short on channels of audio for the gig. So yeah. it either meant I could use two bass drums with one mic inside, and that's it in each one. Yeah. Or we could use one kick, um, one kick, and have mics in and mics yeah. out. So I decided to go for you know yeah. better sound, but the. Uh, the amount of grief I've got online from that. That's crazy. I've really triggered a few people. But, so this, uh, this, this, this bass drum that Keith rushed to get to you, you yeah, haven't even hit it. It's not even being used. It's not I'm even been struck in sorry, anger. Sorry, Keith. Keith is watching at the <laughs> it's, moment, it's can it's I just add? It's never been played. Look at that. It's a brand new head. It hasn't even been touched. It hasn't even got a pillow in it. Um, so yeah, so 222 by 16s, which yep. um, uh, sound fantastic. Um, Tom Wise, yep. um, all of them, we're going... Uh, 10 by 7, yeah. 12 by 8, 16 by 14, yeah. uh, 18 by 16. Okay. Yeah. Um, and um, These, by uh, the way, they don't sound like shallow toms, do no, they? they? No, do they don't. Not they've got, sound they've got like... a ton of tone. Yeah. Um, they've got a lot of warmth. Um, the, for this gig, because being like a rock gig, mm. a Devon Townsend gig, we're kind of tuning everything vaguely lowish. Sure. So it's it's got a lot of bottom end to it. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, we've tuned it tuned it high, like I would mm -hmm. do on a, a normal working gig back at home, mm. and it it sounds fantastic. Um, and then over here, we've got kind of I guess it's my gong drum for the tour, but yeah. it's actually an eighteen. Um, it's yeah, it's an eighteen by fourteen bass drum. Yeah. Uh, and we've just got like a little conversion kit on it, so. Um, I kind of half use it for um, as a gong drum, and then there's a couple of tunes where I trigger some sounds sure, off it as well. Sure, and boy, does it sound great! It's yeah. just yeah. And then, um, believe it or not, my uh, snare drum sort of lurking in there is the uh, brand new Raven. So that let's just, just clarify, right? The Raven is the cheapest drum in it's, the BDC snare drum line. It's too cheap. <laughs> it's too cheap for what it, it is. It really it's crazy. is a Raven. Yeah, that's a Raven. So um, wow. we, we started using the, the Bluebird, which, yeah. um, I mean, is 
amazing, sounds fantastic. Yep. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the amusing story is we were in Paris the other day and uh, I was backstage just bored. So I sort of stood by the side of the stage mm -hmm. watching the support band. And um, I'd noticed that the, the drummer in the support band had like this massive bell brass snare drum mm -hmm. earlier on in the tour. And it sounded really good. So I'm watching him play and I'm thinking, his snare sounds like, it sounds really good. Mm. Like I, I was a little bit- As you'd expect from a bell brass. Yeah, I, w I was a little bit jealous. I'm like, oh God, I think I want that. And uh, I was like, God, his snare sounds so good. And then I uh, stood there and I, it was their last number. And as he walked off stage past me, he said, oh, Darby, thank you for letting me borrow your snare drum because um, I put the, the snare stand through my bottom head in sound check. I'm like, what? And then Mitch, my drum tech, came over and said, oh, yeah, we, uh, sorry, I hope you don't mind. We gave him the Raven to use for the gig. And I was like, That's you're kidding me. And like, so you were jealous the, of your yeah, own drum. Yeah, I was jealous of my own <laughs> drum. And uh, I love that, though, because it, it's, you know, when you've, you've got amazing drums and you suddenly think you've heard something that, that's yeah. better and you're like, oh, is that better? And then you find out you own it. <laughs> <laughs> had you really had you cool. tried it at this point or not or um, not in anger maybe i tried it very briefly in my studio at home but mm. i i wasn't really paying attention yeah, i just yeah. sort of put it up i was playing you know it's a small room um but yeah like the next day we we put it straight up and uh, everyone you know and uh, the bluebird is a fantastic drum like it's, i see it's, it's been moved down the line now yeah, hasn't it uh, you know second and, in and, command and it, i mean it's a gr i love that drum mm -hmm. um but just for the the gig we're doing here this just this just worked, um, dare I say it, better. Um, well, and uh, yeah, it's. I've just heard it, and it just sounds. Yeah, just, I, I saw your fits. face when you heard I was, it. I was really shocked. That punch is way above its yeah. weight, doesn't it? It yeah. really does. Um, yeah, it's it's a fantastic drum, and uh, you know, you, like you called it a budget snare. It's. I can't see anything budget. I didn't say it was a budget. It. I said it was the cheapest in oh, the. Well, I, I didn't I say. Use, I, I didn't use the budget, budget because word. you know, but <laughs> synonymously. <laughs> yeah, good value for money. There we go. There, yeah. Positive spin. There you um, go. I didn't no, say budget. But, but the thing is, when, when, when something is so affordable and so cheap, you yeah. just assume, oh, where have they cut corners? What What's not so good about it? And um, nothing. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, that, that is incredible that you're using it on a tour of this magnitude, you know, playing venues like this to thousands of people. Yeah. And yeah. that is the drum of choice. Well, amazing. And, and so here's the other one. The drummer from the support band said to me, and this is a guy with the really expensive bell mm -hmm. brass. He's like, I'm buying one of them. <laughs> So there you go. There you go. Amazing. Yeah. So um, obviously now I did notice on your snare there is a trigger. Yeah. So wh what's what's the deal with that? Then? So I, I've also got a, kicker, uh, a trigger on the uh -huh. kick drum as well. Uh, and it's not because the, the point of it is not to go, oh, we've got a drum that sounds one way. We want to sound it a, a different way. Mm -hmm. um, I would say the blend is probably 90% natural, 10% yeah. trigger. Okay. And all we're doing is it's bas basically instead of putting reverb on stuff to just give it that bigger sound that you would normally get mm. on a, an album or a gig. It's just sort of a, another way of adding a more controlled reverb where we know that it's going to react the same way every just time. Just more from source rather oh, than... Com completely. So yeah. it just means no matter what room you're in, you're going to have that same sort of spread of sound. Yeah. So uh, it's not at all about replacing the sound of, of the drum. And, and, and what, what I found really interesting before, obviously from the front, as you're looking at this now, this is a, a physically big kit. Yeah. But, you know, you kindly let me sit behind it before and everything is really it's, comfortable and within reach. I'm, I mean, the thing is, if, like, if you look at it, forget this is here. Yeah. Point this straight forward instead of on a slight angle. Mm -hmm. It's a five-piece kit. Yeah, yeah. It's literally a five-piece kit that you would, you know, normally play. This is here. Um, yeah, we got a drum to the left, but I mean, loads of people put a drum to the left or yeah. a snare, and one extra floor tom. Mm. So it's it's not really, it's not as big as it seems. But it, it feels really ergonomically yeah. sort of comfortable oh, if you like it's um yeah I, I could do a jazz gig on this it's yeah. like everything's there it feels fantastic and let's talk heads because I, I i think that the um the ebony heads really complement the orange oh, don't for they? sure for sure like the yin, yin and yang if yeah. you like yeah so what what head configurations so are we've, we've got right now we've got um black ebony ambassadors on the bottom yep and uh we've got uh Emperor Ebony's on yeah. the top, black ones. Yeah. Um, we've tried a few sets of heads on this tour. We've gone through clear amps. We've gone through um, suede's. We've gone through smooth whites. Um, for some reason, like we all just felt the second these heads went on, we're like, mm. that's that works for. I'm not going to say this drum kit because this kit sounds amazing with all the heads. Sure. But for the style of music we're playing here and the, and the the lower tuning mm -hmm. that we have, 
they just seem to work perfectly. Yeah, you, you get the attack and the warmth still, yeah. don't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, you get the power and the control as absolutely. well. Absolutely. What about the bass drum heads? <laughs> uh, bass drum heads, um, normally, I mean, for 20 years now, I've used just regular clear power stroke threes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've just switched to a um, power stroke three with a black dot. Oh, yeah. Um, which they're amazing. The, the black dot just lowers the tone ever so slightly. So sure. you just get a bit more um, depth out of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... I mean, you heard the, again. You heard the kick. It sounds amazing. It sounds incredible. It really does. Yeah. Uh, really looking forward to hearing it tonight. Cool. Uh, obviously, symbol-wise, you've got um, quite an array of Zildjians up yeah, there. Do you want to run yeah. us through what we sure? What we've so got? all Zildjians. I mean, the the, the <clears throat> basis of it is again. It, it, I don't think there are quite as many symbols as it looks. Um, no, no. My main crash is an 18A uh, medium thin. Yeah. Uh, my second crash that I ride on all the time, uh, just above your head, is a. Uh, yeah. 17 inch the, uh, yeah. a custom yeah and then i've just got a 19 inch a custom on the far side which actually really doesn't get hit much yeah so um it's just for a few things when i need a bigger sound so if i if i'm at home working i use i have two crashes that's mm. me mm -hmm. um and then the ride is an a custom medium uh which i've had that for so many years love it uh and then we've got a um 18 inch oriental china over there yeah. which sounds great uh, main hats are, what oh, am I looking? I know what they are. <laughs> uh, just 14 inch A customs. Yeah. And then we've got a set of 14 inch um, session hats yep. on the other side, which I think were like the Steve Gadd yes. type model. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, and that's really just for when I'm doing the double bass drum stuff and yep. I still need to be on hats. Yep. Uh, and then these two things, I've got a Zill Bell and I've got a six inch uh, A custom splash and they're purely just effects. Of course. You know, so, um, but the, w when <laughs> I'm at home, literally, Two crashes, a ride, two hats, maybe a China if you yeah. need it. So do, do you it. know what's nice that, um, at the moment? My the current, you, well, apart from that, <laughs> yeah. But the, the current tradition, well, not the current, the current uh, fad, if you like, is to have massive symbols. And you know, I mean, no, I've, you, I've you, never, you've, I've never been into that. That's probably why I don't hit the nineteen that much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Eighteen and the seventeen, uh, I just think complement each other well, sound good. Mm. Uh, yeah, they sound great. It's it's nice to see. Yeah, and don't forget my cowbell. Now I mentioned this. I said yeah. that cowbell has seen some action. Yeah. And, and how old were you when you bought I, that, I that cowbell? I, I think I saved up for that cowbell when I was about eight years old. It's like an old original LP Ridge Rider. So uh, but, I think it cost me twenty-seven pounds back in the day. I dread to think what they cost now. Yeah, a bit more than that, I reckon. Yeah. But a great cowbell though, and, and it takes a hammer in. It really it. does. The best thing though is it only gets used for eight bars on the entire gig. Um, <laughs> I think we worked out it gets <laughs> sixteen hits in total. And when I was chatting to Devin, I was like, should I just put it on the trigger pad over there and sample it? It's like, no, let's just use a real cowbell. So Isn't that amazing, though, yeah. the fact that you've had something, you know, you bought as a kid. Yeah. And who'd have known all these years later? Yeah. You completely. probably wouldn't have imagined you were going to be doing venues like this no, with an artist no, like completely. this. You know? No, completely. It's amazing. Very cool, indeed. On a bright orange drum kit. It, do you know what? what? What was the... What was the inspiration for this? Was it something you've always wanted or? It's my favorite color. Is it simple yeah, as that? Yeah, it's as simple as that. Um, I've always wanted an orange kit. Mm. And um, so when I was uh, making the switch and playing these, I was like, right, I'm going to do it now. Nice and so subtle. I've still got a Raven glass kit though as well, which is yeah. um, when I don't want to be quite so ostentatious, <laughs> um, I use that. And actually I've also got, God, I'm a lucky guy, aren't I? I've got a, a lounge kit as well. Have you? I'm like you, yeah. Oh. Yeah, so. Uh, I didn't know and, that. Yeah, that's how I'm looking forward. I haven't had a chance to play on that much, but uh, yeah. I went uh, into a drum shop yesterday in Manchester and uh, and had a play on one. I was like, God, I can't wait to get home and play this. <laughs> it's it's a different kettle of fish to this, yeah. but equally amazing. So what finish have you gone for for that? I've got the, um, oh, what's the, the new Carnaby Night. Night. Thank you. <laughs> it's a good job you're there. Keith's down there <laughs> watching. Know. In case you're thinking, where's that coming from? Yeah, yeah, Keith. The uh, main man is watching at this. At least you know I'm not speak. working off auto cue for this. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I could Carnaby Night, which uh, I'm also lucky because uh, I've got a 10 inch Tom. Ah, right, yeah. okay. So uh, on that kit, I've got 10, 12, 14, 16, yeah. a 22 inch kick, and a 20. So depending on what I'm doing, I can swap those out. <sighs> Just, I mean, this, the stuff looks beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah. And this color, I wasn't sure. When you talked about it, I thought orange. Yeah, but doesn't everyone it work? said that. It works. Everyone, everyone said that. I remember Al Murray said that at mm. the uh, the evening that we all had. He's like, "Why are you getting an orange kit?" And I'm like, "You'll see." Well, I think it turns heads, and it, it makes a real statement, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. And, and the fact that you know the the all all the theme of the the, the, the whole stage is yeah. Been... But that was all based on this drum yeah. set, an unfinished drum kit, and and the attention to detail with the orange tape. 
the uh, the orange. We've got the orange, orange sim pads. Yeah, the orange sim pads. Yes. They're really good as well. And of course, there's a, a growing collection. Of, yeah. Um, it looks quite painful, that actually. I have to say, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, there's there's definitely a growing amount of um, people seem to chuck them up on stage. And octopuses. They octopuses? end up on my rack. Um, octopuses. There you go. Right or first time. Octopodes, I think. But technically, octopi is frowned upon in the uh, the dictionary. Oh, okay, there we go. We know, we know now. And um, I also want to talk about monitoring wise. I mean, gone are the days of having massive side fills with yep. double eighteens and getting your ears ripped out. Just talk about your um, monitoring setup because it's important. This is important. Is this well, at the end of the day? So, isn't it? so we're all on in ears for this gig because um, we we all play to click and yep. there's there's certain noises and sounds on backing tracks. Sure. So we have to obviously be in sync with that. Um, so um, I've got a desk there and I've got control. Um, so I have uh, stereo drums. Mm -hmm. I've got stereo um, backing track, stereo band, um, click and uh, kick drums. So yep. I can change my kick sound yep. depending on the thing. And then I've also got a uh, Portland Davis BC2 stall there, yep. which uh, is life changing. Those things are so life changing. So you couldn't manage without that? No, I'm guessing. I couldn't play some of the songs in yeah. the set without it. because. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a speed merchant. You know, on the feet, uh, and there's a few songs that are, you know, at the upper end of my ability. Rapid. So, um, yeah, <laughs> and without being able to get that sort of tactile yeah. feel, feedback through my bum, yeah, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be screwed. So that thing's amazing. amazing. But we've also got an amazing monitor engineer yeah. as well. So I mean, my sound on stage every night just, it, you know, it sounds like I'm listening to a record. You know, Perfect. it's really good. Well, it's an amazing setup. And how's the tour been going generally? Because you're Tour's quite far into it now, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, we've, we've got five shows left, including tonight. We've been out for about seven weeks. Yeah. Uh, and, um, yeah, we've, it's, it's, uh, the shows have all been, like, sold out or as good as sold yeah. out. Um, yeah, it's been fantastic. Um, been so, good crowds? Oh, it's been amazing crowds. Um, yeah, it's been great. Yeah. Um, we're just all very tired at the minute, and we've all yeah. gained a lot of weight. So uh, <laughs> it's a shame you didn't catch us at the start of the tour. Well, you, you kindly let me have a, a little wander onto the bus before, and I have yeah. to say it's the nicest smelling tour bus I've been on. I've not been on that many. I've been on a few, but it smells it smells spectacularly good. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. We're very hygienic people. Well, obviously, yeah. So seven months, uh, seven weeks, I should say. It doesn't, yeah. doesn't smell like seven weeks worth yeah. of living in there. But yeah. um, look, I know you've got a sound check to do. Yep. Um, so thanks for giving up your time. Mate, you're so welcome. Generously. Always a pleasure to chat to you. What, likewise. And, a, and about these. Uh, well, it's always good to talk about these. So um, um, thankfully, I'm coming to the gig tonight, so we get to hear them. And um, look, best of luck with the rest of the tour. 